Have you ever wanted your own AI server? A DJX station just in front of you, but it turned out to be a, just a dream? In this video, I'll walk you through on how I built mine. Today, I'll be sharing my reasoning and key details that will help you with your own AI server build. We'll start by asking whether building your own AI server makes sense for you. Then we'll go over the parts I chose and the reason behind each one of them. Next, we'll look at the benchmark to see how this build compare with the other options. And finally, I'll be sharing what I've learned along the way. Hopefully, this will be useful for you if you decide to build your own as well. Having some experience developing and running AI workloads at my day job, I wanted to see if I could apply that knowledge in building my own AI server. So I started researching, collecting parts piece by piece, and eventually assembling them all together. You're probably watching this because you don't work for an AI lab and buying a DJX station or a custom workstation isn't realistic. Maybe you've seen the specs of the DJX Spark and like me, we're a bit disappointed. If you haven't, I've linked Nitty Gritty's DJX Spark video below. If you've got a limited budget, are fine with a few trade-offs in performance and enjoy the challenge of problem solving and learning as you go, chances are you'll see something here that you can apply in your own build. And if you like seeing others do similar projects, I've linked Digital Spaceport's build videos in the description as well. The first decision is the motherboard, specifically looking at multi-GPU support. Server or workstation motherboards are ideal, but for me, they were too costly to buy locally. The next option are high-end consumer motherboards with multiple PCIe slots. I went with ASUS ProArt Z890. You typically run one GPU at 16 lanes. Two GPUs split into eight lanes each. With three GPUs, the third slot runs at four lanes. This board can even run four GPUs by bifurcating the second slot into dual four lanes. You can also add GPUs using the M.2 slot. Normally, for NVMe storage, each slot can run a GPU over four lanes. In a previous build, I used an M.2 slot with Octolink for an external GPU. This board also has Thunderbolt 5, faster than Oculink. In most AI focused builds, a top-end CPU matters less than you might expect. I first looked at used motherboards, but after factoring shipping and availability, it wasn't practical. So I went with a new motherboard and CPU, an Intel Core Ultra. Not the most loved, but it gave me the right price to performance and two more possible GPU connections via Thunderbolt 5. I went for 96GB of memory with two GPUs, my previous 64GB setup was already near its limits. Cooling matters in any AE server. For now, I stayed with air cooling, simpler to build and maintain. My case already came with two Noctua 200mm fans, so I just added more fans along with their CPU cooler. I'll cover thermal management and a custom 3D print and shroud my friend made in a future video. With multiple GPUs, the power supply is one component not to skimp on. Go as big as your case and budget allows. I've picked a used EVGA 2000 watts unit, enough to run four GPUs. Data center GPUs are out of reach for most home users. I went with gaming GPUs. In my case, some use RTX 3090s. For my needs, the 3090s 24GB of RAM hits a sweet spot. Big enough for large models at a reasonable price. VRAM is key. If the model fully fits in a GPU memory, you'll get the best performance. With gaming GPUs, the trade-offs include more complicated software setups, higher power draw, and greater space requirements. As you add more GPUs, those challenges get harder. There's also a limited inter-GPU bandwidth when you're relying on PCIe only. Even high-end consumer motherboards have a finite number of PCIe lanes. But for most home workloads, if you're willing to optimize both your hardware and software, it's possible to make multi-GPU setup work within those limits. I'll do a deeper dive on GPUs in a future video, since they're the biggest driver of both cost and performance. Let's see how this AI server actually performs. Benchmarks gives us data so we can make our next decisions without guesswork. For LLM inference, I'm starting with the recently released GPT OSS models. The 20 billion variant fits in the single 3090s VRAM, which means you can run multiple GPUs in VLLM using Tensor Parallel Mode. I'm using VLLM here because it's widely deployed in production 
and handles concurrent requests efficiently. Testing with NVIDIA's Gen AI Perf, I measured the 90th percentile throughput in tokens per second per user at a concurrency of 5 to simulate heavy home use. Two 3090s delivered around 66 tokens per second per user, which is faster than an A100 at 52 tokens per second per user. These numbers are lower than what you'll see from Olama or Lama CPP. But remember, VLLM here is serving five users at once. Olama usually struggles with concurrency. Multiple GPUs boost performance if the model fits in a single GPU's VRAM, like the 20 billion GPT OSS. One limitation is that tensor parallelism only works in binary splits, two, four, eight GPUs. In my case, three GPUs weren't really advantageous, and in most cases, it didn't work. So the clear next step is to add a fourth GPU. I also compared the 3090 with the RTX 5080 and Apple's M4 Max. I couldn't run all the GPUs in the same backend. Some don't handle concurrency well. So for a fair review, I've set the concurrency to one in NVIDIA's Gen AI Perf. For M4 Max, I've used Apple MLX to get the most out of the Apple Silicon. The A100 stayed on VLLM, that's what's available. For 5080, I've used Llama CVP as that was easier to get rapid running than VLLM. I also included both VLLM and Llama CPP results for the 3090, so you can see the difference between those two backends in a single request mode. In that mode, the 3090 is only slightly slower than the A100. The standout here is the 5080. At 211 tokens per second, almost twice the speed of all the others. I had to compile Llama CPP from source to get GPT OSS running on the 5080. The GPT OSS model is one of the first models to be published in FP4. Blackwell class GPUs like the 5080 can run FP4 natively. Lower precisions like FP4 helps all GPUs by reducing VRAM needs and boosting performance. But native FP4 support on the 5080 takes it even further. What if we use the larger 120 billion GPT OSS variant? The 120 billion doesn't fit in a single 3090, so I had to split it across three 3090s. Concurrency stayed at one, a sharding model across GPUs generally doesn't scale well for concurrent workloads. With three 3090s, I hit 99 tokens per second. The A100 managed 88. Keep in mind that VLLM on A100 is slower than Lama CVP for single requests. What is notable is the M4 Max in a laptop form factor can run a 120 billion model at a usable 68 tokens per second. The key takeaway is that you can run large models by sharding, but just be aware that each extra shard adds overhead. Let's now try to do some image generation which uses stable diffusion models as opposed to LLMs which uses transformers architecture. I use FluxDev which isn't really easy to parallelize, so this test only use a single GPU. I have set it for 1024 by 1024 resolution with 20 steps. I have fixed the seed to one using the same coffee shop prompt for all the GPUs. The 3090 took 20 seconds in FP16. Using FP8, it cuts it down to 23. No big change since the 3090 only supports FP16 natively. The A100 completed the image in 12 seconds, much faster than I expected. Given both A100 and 3090 are Ampere architecture, I thought the results will be closer. Memory bandwidth may be the difference here. The 5080 at FP16 couldn't fit a model into its 16 gigabyte VRAM, so it offloaded the layers, slowing it down to 53 seconds. Switching to FP8, it fits the whole model in VRAM, cutting it to 16 seconds, almost four times faster, thanks to its native FP8 support. The same core factors apply here. VRAM fit, memory bandwidth, and native precision support. In image generation, the impact of those factors can be even larger. For a more traditional workload, I train ResNet50 on the C4100 dataset in PyTorch. Five epochs which batch sizes from 16 to 1024. 
Note, the y-axis on this graph isn't linear. It's scaled so you can see the NVIDIA GPU to GPU differences more clearly. The M4 Max here used the older MPS backend, not the current MLX. But the gap is so big, I would not expect any material difference using either one. NVIDIA's CUDA clearly leads in the training. This is why NVIDIA dominates the market. This test used FP32, not FP8 or FP4, where the 5080 has an advantage. The 5080's best time was at the batch size 512 with 3.47 seconds per epoch. With multiple GPUs, scaling depends heavily on the batch size. At smaller batches like 16 and 32, my triple 3090s are slower actually than a single GPU. At batch size 256, a single 3090 hits its best time at 5 seconds per epoch. Triple 3090s kept on improving until they reached their best time of 3.1 seconds at batch size 2048. CUDA is still the best for training. Multiple GPUs only helps when the batch size is large enough and it's possible to split the training data. If you're enjoying the content of this channel, please subscribe below and help me grow my channel. This build came about $4,500, a mix of new and used parts. Prices will vary where you live, but it's a realistic reference for a build-your-own AI server. A similar spec custom built from a vendor like Bison runs around $10,700. I tried to make the build as close as possible to what I've built, but there's still two spec variations. It has two 4090 GPUs and just a 1500-watt PSU. A single A100 data center GPU is roughly $10,500 and that's just by the card by itself. A new A100 is about $25,000, and you still need to buy a system to run on it. What have we learned and where are we going next with this? With this build, it actually serviced a few problems that I didn't expect, and some of my assumptions were incorrect. Configuring and physically routing those PCA lanes to connect the GPUs was much more harder than I actually expected. Adding to the challenge of fitting three GPUs in the case, routing the power, making sure that they don't overheat while under heavy use. For each one of these, it kind of forced me to rethink and change my plans. But every fix was progress, and genuinely, it was pretty fun while fixing these things. I learned a few things by doing the benchmarks, running the inference on the LLMs, stable diffusion, and doing some simple ML training gave me some interesting insights. Paralyzing, sharding the models for the LLM, looking at the limits of flux, and splitting the training data as well as changing the batch sizes gave me a better understanding of which GPU setup will work for different workloads. I hope this was also useful for you. The benchmark also changed my initial opinion about the lower quants like FP4. By having hardware that can take advantage of natively, you have another option that could actually work well for your different workload. This build actually went pretty well. It can now match some of the more expensive cloud offerings as well as a more expensive custom-built workstation. And in most cases, it's good enough for home use. By building your own AI server, you now have the option to have a private offline AI that's under your control and without the limits and costs of the cloud providers. This is analogous to buying your own home over renting. It may not be big and spacious, but you can do whatever you want with it. Based on what I know now, I'm aiming for 4 GPU setup, and hopefully they'll be Blackwell class. I'll be putting them on the by 8 slots and the pair of 3090s moving down to the by 4 slots. I'll also comparing this setup with my $150 Supermicro motherboard that I just got. I'll be uploading new videos with deep dives of GPU configs and how I did the air cooling, and if you have ideas that you want me to cover, please let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Yes. What? You're, you're done. Internal temp too high. Your camera cannot handle it. <laughs> Something is wrong. Nothing's wrong. I'm just checking it. For the ML training. Gave me a better... <laughs> if you're enjoying the content...